I give you abilities and talents that make it possible for you to work in an ethical way to earn a living, to provide for yourself, and also when you do choose to marry, whereby you can provide for your family as well. I see today a problem not only with the work ethic, but I see it carrying over into the workplace. There just seems to be so many wars in the workplace. A couple of years ago, uh, somebody sent me an email. It had an attachment, and when you opened it up, it was a picture of a guy in his cubicle in a corporate office building. His cubicle was absolutely covered with the small post -it, yellow, yellow post-it notes. They were all over his computer screen. They were all over his cubicle wall. They were on his telephone. His cubicle was totally covered with toasting notes. And what had, what had happened was that uh, uh, somebody was mad at him. And that was their way of getting back. Getting back. Look at Ephesians chapter 6, if you will. Verses 5 to 9, Paul says, Slaves, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh. And, and, and to take that out of that culture and put it into modern day terminology, let's read that and say it this way. Employees, be obedient to those who are your bosses or your managers or owners. According to the flesh, with fear and trembling and the sincerity of your heart as to Christ. Not by way of eye service as men pleasers, but as slaves or as employers of Christ, or excuse me, employees of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will and the service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing whatever good thing each one does, this he will receive back from the Lord with the slave of free. And employers do the same things to your employees, give them and give up threatening, knowing that both their master and yours is in heaven. And there is no partiality with him. If I could put it in a nutshell here, Paul is saying that the workplace is the greatest environment there is for a believer to shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If your faith will not work for you where you work, it will not work anywhere else. Because how your faith operates and works in the workplace is a reflection of how it's working in your personal life, in your home life and in your worship life. So the question would be, what kind of employee are you? Another question would be, what kind of job would you like to have? Another question would be, what kind of employer are you? What kind of boss are you? What kind of manager are you? Those are good questions. And all of those questions are answered right here in Ephesians chapter 6. And verses 5 to 9. So let's get right to it. The issue is this. Who are you going to trust in the marketplace? Who are you going to trust when you're on the job? In other words, in this day and time, who are you going to trust when you don't have a job? Where, in other words, what's the object of your faith going to be? And Paul says, regardless, employed or unemployed, it's all about faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the giver of every good and perfect gift. You think maybe nowadays is a good time to be thankful if you have a job? Amen. I know what it's like to be out of work. I, I'm making up five months of back rent right now because I have a landlord who believed in me and who stuck with me for tough time. And I'm catching up with him right now. He believed in me. I know what it feels like. So let's get to it. What does Paul say here about this marketplace and its relationships? Here we go. First of all, Christian employees should do their jobs, Paul says, as if Jesus Christ were their supervisor. Notice I'm going to read to you from the message from Ephesians 6, verse 5. Here's how, here's how the message, the paraphrase says it. Servants or employees respectfully obey your earthly masters but always with an eye to obey the real master. You know what Paul is saying here? It's really simple. He's saying that everyone, everyone has a head. You know, here's what's so exciting about this passage. What this really says is nobody is really the boss. If you can look at it that way, you're going to be miles ahead. Because look at the context. 
context of this passage. What does he say about the relationship in marriage? He says the head of the woman is who? The husband. The husband. She has a head. In, in Ephesians 6, the first portion, I'll get to it later, it talks about the children. And they have a head, the mom and dad. They've got to be what? Obey. They've got to be obedient. I don't really have to call this thing. That's right, that's right, don't worry about it. Uh, they have to be obedient to the mom and dad. Man. The man who, who runs a company, he has to be accountable to who? Probably a board of directors. Maybe a CEO, maybe the chairman of the board. But everyone has accountability. Everybody has a head. I, I love the, the seventh chapter of Luke. Remember there was a Roman centurion who had a servant who was sick and died and he heard about Jesus. And he told one of his servants, he said, you go get this man named Jesus and you bring him because he can pray over this guy and he'll be healed. And while the servant goes away, he sends him up. He says, oh, he says oh, go catch him. And he said, tell him to come back because he said, you know what? I'm a man given under authority. I said this person go and he goes. I said this person come and he comes. And he says, just go tell Jesus. All he has to do is speak. He's got like long distance. Just tell Jesus. All you've got to do is speak and my servant will be healed. But he says, I'm a man given under authority. What did Jesus say about him? I've never seen a man of such faith in all the world. See, the issue is faith. The, the issue is, is trust. So you see, everybody has a head. So there should not be jealousy between employees and employers and even vice versa. So Christian employees should do their jobs as if Jesus Christ is their supervisor. Number two, Christian employers Christian employers should treat their employees as people and not as machines. You like that one? Let me say that again. Christian employers should treat their employees as people and not as machines. Let me read to you from the message again. This is verse 9 from the message. Masters, it's the same with you. Our employers, it's the same with you. No abuse, please, and no threats. You and your servants are both under the same master in heaven. What I think Jesus is saying to Paul here is if you're an employer, you're a boss, you're a manager, you're an owner, he says, you need to treat your people like adults. Don't treat them like children. In other words, don't treat them like machines. And he says, treat people correctly. Treat them the way you want to be treated. I think he's also saying here that true leaders who manage and who employ people know how to reward those who work for them. What's happening today? Greed's driving this country, and so as a result, Take my gold to parachute and run. So, you know, whatever happens to everybody else, too bad. Isn't that what's driving our country right now? Amen. 